What up, fam? Welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. On today's episode, we get crafty by learning the ancient and beautiful art of wire wrapped jewelry. This is where you make intricate patterns by weaving, linking, and wrapping pieces of wire together to form art with which to adorn yourself. And so like on the face of it, this skill is already kind of cool. I mean, with a super limited investment in like tools and materials, you can create some pieces that are really stunning. But the part that I find fascinating is how long we as a species have been doing this. Examples of wire wrapped jewelry have been found dating all the way back to like 2000 BC. And here's what I find really interesting about history, especially living history like this. 2000 BC, 4,000 years ago, somebody in Sumar was using this technique to express themselves. Then 2000 years after that, somebody was in ancient Rome doing the same thing. And then 2000 years after that, your boy Clever jumps in to give it a try. That is three different people, each 2000 years apart from the one just before it, sharing a similar experience. We all could take a look at and understand what the other person went through when they made this piece and kind of judge the piece on how good it is. And then the two ancient professionals could have a good chuckle at how shoddy my piece is. Actually, that's really kind of mean of them to do. Try my best out here. Let's, let's see them edit together a YouTube video. Now I'm happy they're gone. They're mean. Okay, but I'll, I'll stop waxing all poetic and kind of hurting my own feelings. Suffice to say, this is a really cool skill that I think you'll enjoy. So without much further ado, let's level up this skill. Getting started. Now, as I mentioned before, the barrier to getting into this skill is super low. For tools, all I use were some small needle nose pliers, a pair of wire cutters, and a pair of these round nose pliers for making like little loops and stuff. I would, however, just make sure you get pliers like this one that don't have the little grippy teeth inside. I started off just kind of using regular ones and the teeth started marring up my wire. So yeah, try to get ones that are smooth in the inside. And speaking of wire, I bought a bunch of different kinds of wires in both 20 and 24 gauge. The larger wire I use kind of for the frame of the piece and for its main elements and the 24 gauge wire for the most part, I just use to kind of bind everything together. Now when shopping for your wire, you're gonna see they come in a bunch of different shapes. They have square, half round, round, spiraled, and they also come in a few different hardnesses as well. These being dead soft, which is the most malleable and easiest to work, but they don't hold their shape as well under stress. Then there's half hard, which is slightly harder and tends to hold the shape a little bit better, though it, it is a little bit tougher to work than the dead soft. And the last is full hard, which is more difficult to work. You'll probably need like tools to shape it. And it tends to be a bit less forgiving than the other two. At least that's what it says online. The only experience I have is with what I chose to do this project, which were round and half hard. For the final piece of my majestic puzzle I have going on here, I picked up these beautiful stones from a local curio shop. These end up being perfect because I, I want the finished product to look like an amulet of power that like a wizard would pimp his neck piece with. To that end, I started off by tracing around my stones. Then I sketched in some simple designs to give myself a bit of direction. Not being familiar with the medium of wire, I'm just trying to keep these as simple as possible. Sweet, so with a plan on our page and a song in our heart, I think we're ready to move on to the basic cage cabochon. So the most beginner friendly technique that I can find while I was searching was this cage wrap. The premise of it is just like it says, we're gonna build a cage around our stone to hold it in place. For my first foray into this art, I chose this pretty teardrop amethyst. I started by cutting three strands of 20 gauge copper wire at eight inches a piece. Now, depending on the size of your stone, those lengths are gonna vary. You just need enough to wrap all the way around the stone and leave a good amount over for you to bend over into the bale and then into your little swirlies and stuff. You'll see as we go along. I also cut about a foot of the 24 gauge wire to work with. Start by lining up the three 20 gauge wires evenly. Then use the 24 gauge wire to wrap them together at the center making sure they stay flat and side by side. You want the beginning and the end of your wraps to be on the same side so you can hide them later. Just snip off the excess and flatten those wrappings down with your pliers. This should leave you with an even wrap and all of your wires lying down flat. Next, we'll wanna bend the bundle around our stone with the wrapping at the bottom. Work this into a loop and have it fit as close as possible around the stone while keeping all the wires nice and straight. You don't want any crisscrossing or overlapping here. Again, using the 24 gauge wire as a wrap, I combine the tops together to hold everything firm. This area is gonna form the bale, which on like a necklace or a piece of jewelry is the little loop that you slide the chain through. 
So make sure to wrap enough to account for the fact that you're gonna bend this over. At this point, I nipped all but two of the remaining free wires at the top. As per my drawing here, these will form the little swirls in the center. With that all set up, I used some round pliers just to bend that bale into shape. Now to keep it there, I wrapped the two free wires around just once to secure everything in place. I thought it looked good and it seemed to hold pretty tightly. But just a heads up on a lot of these wraps, I'm kind of just making it up as I go along. Like there's no set rules that I know of that's like, you have to use this in order to combine everything together. Like if it's there and you can make it make sense and it holds everything together, then yeah, do it. It's part of what makes it an art. If it is aesthetically pleasing to you and it's gonna get the job done, go for it. Now with everything in shape and staying where I want it, I pushed the stone into place and made sure I liked how the fit looked. Now to lock the stone there, take the backmost strands of your three cage wires and bend them across the back of the stone. This will stop it from being able to pop out of the back. I then repeated this in the front, effectively locking the stone into place. Now comparing it to my drawing, I decided the best way to keep my little swirly arms in place would be to pass them underneath the front of the cage here. Then I form my little loops. And check that out! I actually, I made it pretty. And again, this is legit my first attempt at trying this at all. And look, I'm, I'm proud of how that came. Like if you're an experienced um, rapper, you know, not, not like a rapper, although it would be awesome to see Snoop Dogg being like, yo, this looks dope, son. But yeah, if you're like really experienced at this, you're probably like, oh, it's so basic. But I, I really like how this came out. I'm impressed. Long story short, yeah, it's a totally doable skill. Um, it doesn't take a lot to get something that is honestly pretty. It's, it looks good. All right, so that was that cage wrap with the super simple design. In this next one, I'm gonna use the same basic design, but show how you can add just like a little bit more complexity. The scarab cage. The full disclosure, this is the same exact type of method used in the first one that I showed you. Just at the end, I thought it looked kind of like a scarab, so I went with scarab cage. Besides, it sounds really cool. The scarab cage. Sounds like the title of like a horrible B film where you're stuck in a museum while a mummy hunts you down. Will you survive the scarab cage? For this one, I'm using this gorgeous piece of malachite. I'm not gonna lie, I love that stone. That pretty stone right there. And like I said, this is the same one. So the first steps are gonna be exactly the same as the first one I showed you. We're gonna be wrapping the three 20 gauge wires with a length of 24 gauge, shape it to fit around the stone, and secure the tops into place with more 24 gauge. This time though, after only three wraps, I bend the two frontmost arms out of the way before I continue wrapping. Now just a note here, once I finished wrapping, I didn't cut off the rest of the 24 gauge wire. I'm gonna use that to secure the bale after the fact. There just wasn't a great shot in which you can pick it out in the mess of wire, so figured I'd just let you know. Once enough was wrapped, I used a punch to help me form the bale. Now these first two wires that I set aside are what I'm gonna to use to form the front of my cage. I just used the 24 gauge wire to bind the center together to form what will be the wings of my scarab. Putting the stone in place, I then spread out the back and the front wires to complete the cage. Then I take the hanging wires from my front little wing parts here and weave them under the front of the cage wire, over the center, and then finally under the back wire, which I then wrap around a few times just to secure everything in place. To form my little swirl design, I just pushed one of the free bail wires through the frontmost cage wire on either side and then bent them into a swirl. Then I secured those swirls in place with some 24 gauge wire. Finally, I secured my bale in place with that 24 gauge wire I told you about that I left over. Then I cut off the excess. And shazam! That is an amulet any high priest of Imhotep will be proud to have in his sarcophagus while he waits to be risen. Now a couple of things with this scale. First and foremost, it's really hard for me to film. This is because the pieces are real small and my hands are real big and tend to get in the way. And also because I'm super new to this, you know, like this little scarab one is my second one made ever. Um, I catch myself like, 
It starts here in frame and I'm slowly bringing it closer as I'm trying to figure out where I want to wrap everything. So yeah, forgive me if some things are kind of out of frame or, or you feel like some things are skipped a little bit. I tried to make it as clear as possible, but that being said, like every rock you get is gonna be different shape than what I've got going on here right now. And your design, your layout is gonna be your own. So where I'm just kind of winging it and figuring out where these wraps will go, you're probably gonna do the same thing. Just as long as you get the basic idea that you're forming a cage around this thing to lock it in place. Um, anything else you do with those free hanging wires to kind of make swirl and designs or wraps or whatever, um, that's part of the art of it, right? That's, that's the you part, that's the creative part. The other little note here on this is before you do this, don't cut your nails. I made the epic mistake of like trimming my nails the day I did this. This resulted in my fingertips pulling away from my nails as I'm trying to work these wires into place. My hands are on fire right now. It hurts so bad. So yeah, don't do that or like, I don't know, maybe tape up the tips of your fingers. I don't know, man. Which is funny because any of the tutorials I watched on this, it's like a nice older woman or something like that, you know, going to town and her hands are probably like whip your throat out strong. And that's my, that's my hot tip for this session. Ah, my hands hurt real bad, guys. All right, so I got one more cool one that like when I saw, I had to learn how to do. So check out this wire tree. So yeah, this being skill tree, I couldn't not make the dope wire tree design, right? Like I had to. Now for this build, I'm using this really interestingly shaped hypersthene stone, hypersthene, I think that's how it's pronounced, hypersthene. It was in a bin of stones and I said that one, I just took it. I'm pretty sure it's hypersthene. I started by bending up some of my 20 gauge silver wire into the same shape as the stone, but so it's smaller than the perimeter. Then, just as before, I wrapped the bale area up with the 24 gauge wire, bending it into shape before continuing to wrap to secure the whole thing in place. Next, I cut four strands to the 24 gauge wire and began wrapping them around the bottom of my frame. Only do like four or five wraps each, leaving them secure with eight spaced out legs of wire hanging down. Now positioning my stone into place, I proceeded to bend my wire strands over its edge and laying them flat on the face. Just make sure these hug the bottom of the stone nice and tightly. Satisfied with that, I locked them into place with my thumb and twisted about an inch worth of the wires together. This makes the shape of a tree trunk with roots. Next, I separated my branches and twisted the partitioned wires together just enough to make them look like branches, but leaving the individual wires separated at the ends. These I'm gonna scoop around the back and secure to our frame, using three or four twists each to lock everything in place. This is gonna make sure everything stays laying tight to the stone and gives the appearance of a badass tree design in the front. Like, check that out. This one, just like the ones before it, are super simple. Like, that whole build probably took me roughly 10 minutes to do. But I love the results. Like, anybody who sees that, that's a, that's a tree, right? Like, it, I think that's really cool. Seriously, there's no reason not to give this a try. It's really cheap to start and the results with like no experience are instantly satisfying. And I know I did at least an all right job because my wife walked by while I was doing it and she's like, I'm gonna take those, right? <laughs> but that's another thing, right? Like aside from being able to house the souls of your victims or whatever, they also make really fetching gifts. It's also just one of those skills that really on the face of it is super simple, right? Like. Within a few minutes, I was able to start twisting things up and getting the feel for it and making something that was pretty. But the more you delve into it, if this was something you just kind of wanted to pursue, some of the designs I've seen are so intricate and amazing. Like you can just follow this rabbit trail as far as you want to go. But this right here is good enough for me for now while I nurse my broken and battered hands. Fam, I may never play the piano again. Which isn't a huge loss because I didn't want to play the piano in the first place, but I could dream. What if I wanted to learn? Maybe I'll learn how to play the piano. And I can't because I broke my fingers. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit me with that thumbs up love and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. Also check out the Discord link down in the description. We got a whole bunch of people having really interesting conversation. If you like the stuff that I do here, you will totally love that group. Finally, if there's any skills you want to see me cover, leave it in the comment section and I will add it to the list. All right, well, I better go. Step one of making a phylactery and granting myself sweet, sweet immortality is done. Now, I haven't researched the rest of it, but how hard can it be, right? In the meantime, keep leveling up, you.